Okay, cool. Looks like we re we're recording. Um, okay, hello. Um, hello, Edu Elfie, I think is your, is your YouTube name. Um, I am MigTor, and I was um, commenting on one of your videos last night. Uh, at least for me it was last night. I don't know if the difference in time zone, it probably makes a, a big difference. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was, and um, I was saying something about how wouldn't it be cool if you implemented, you know, some warp plugins into the Minecraft uh, EDU or Minecraft Edu, as you say, uh, mod, uh, and and I can sort of expand the functionality a bit and make something cool, like say a, a plant or animal cell. And then of course, <laughs> turns out you already got that idea and started work on a cell. Um, so before I got your comment, though, and before I looked through the rest of your videos, which I actually haven't looked through all of them, I've only looked through a couple, um, good stuff, good stuff, though, um, but, um, yeah, uh, what was I going to say, lost my train of thought, um, right, so yeah, before I, before I looked through your videos and noticed you were doing the exact same thing that I already thought of, or rather, you had already thought of the, th the thing that I had suggested, um, I started building my own plant cell as sort of a, uh, a proof of concept kind of thing. I mean, obviously, it's not as it's not as um, detailed as yours, and it's not as big as yours, and it doesn't have some very key organelles. It only has like a chloroplast, a, a mitochondrion, uh, some cell walls, a vacuole, a nucleus, nucleolus, just really like the basic things you learn in like sixth grade or whatever. Not you know the endoplasmic reticulum or whatever. Um, or however you say it, you know, there are different pronunciations across the globe. Um, but, um, I, I, when I, as I was building it, I, I was using a, 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 this plugin, this, this server plugin called uh, WorldEdit to help me build it. And I noticed in your stuff that your, your, your EDU mod comes with a few things to really help out teachers building things quicker and more easily. Um, but I thought it would be cool if you could combine that with, say, Something like World Edit or Voxel Sniper, uh, and those are just both plugins that allow you to sort of edit the world and create things on a larger scale while you're playing the game. So if you had those mods installed on, say, a, a home copy of Minecraft, you could, you know, m make your whole world really easily and quickly, and then just copy the world file over to the one that's modded with the EDU mod, and then you can stick all your teacher blocks in there, like the, you know the build blocks or the don't build blocks or the spawn blocks or all those little blocks and stuff that you have. So I'm going to give you a quick uh, demo of what I've done. Um, I've got a, I have, I got a server running here um, with a couple of plugins. So it's a bucket server. Um, I'm not sure if you know what a bucket server is. It's likely that you do. If you don't, though, give it a, give it a look. B-U-K-K-I-T. It's just a container that allows you to, you know, put plugins in your server and, and increase your functionality a bit. It's likely that your uh, Minecraft EDU plugin and mod uses a bucket server, so you probably know what that is. But if you don't, that's what it is. So I'm going to go into my server. This world that I have right here, make it daytime. This world that I have right here um, is just sort of a, a test world that I was using to explore some of the Minecraft, uh, or rather the world edit functionalities, um, because I'm rather new to the to the uh, to the plugin myself. Um, let me just clear all my inventory here. Uh, um, and I'm not going to go through and actually give you a tutorial of World Edit um, for a few reasons. First of all, we'd be all day. <laughs> we'd be watching this all day, and it would never actually upload because it'd be such a big file size. And also, there are plenty of tutorials online about how to do that, especially on YouTube. Um, some really basic tutorials if you're interested. And, of course, if you do have any other questions, you can feel free to comment or, or leave me a video or whatever. Um, but this is my plant cell, sort of a proof of concept. And... Um, you can see we got cell walls and we got another one here. Um, what's good about World Edit is it allows you to sort of manipulate things on enormous scales, right? I mean, for all I know, you already know all this. For all I know, you've been using World Edit at home for the last, you know, since it came out. Um, but I thought I'd, you know, sort of combine these two ideas of, uh, oops, of uh, World Edit and sort of this educational idea, which really just fascinates me. Um, so, um, so yeah, so let me just go through what I've done. Obviously, you can see it's not as big as yours at all, and it's a plant cell, not an animal cell, and, and all that. Um, but 
let me just go through and, and show you what I've got. Um, so you, you obviously have the cell walls here. These, this, this cell wall was actually extremely easy to build um, with World Edit. Um, what you do, basically, essentially, what you do, um, this little ac axe I have is called a wand, and it allows me to like make selections and and things like that. So um, right now I have like this sort of square selection thing going on, where you got all these like these, these cubes and stuff. <coughs> um, there are different kinds of selections you can do. I'm going to change that to a polygon selection, and now it's just sort of this polygon. So I can I can make sort of these lines. And it'll just draw polygons. And so, okay, now we have that. And then we're selecting all those blocks. And then I can just say expand the selection up, or rather three up, or something like that, right? And now we have the selection is sort of expanded. And then we can say set wool green. The way Minecraft works, um, the colors of the wool are controlled by metadata within the object. So this green is separated from the wool by this colon here um, that, uh, that tells it what color it is. So this is all, this is green, right? And then, um, then all we have to do is select our internal layer. And this is just a smaller scale from that, but it's basically the same thing, right? So you say you want this to be like the cell wall, something like that. All right, and then you say expand three down. So now we're there. And you just say set air. Um, and then if you want a floor, you can just say fill um, wool green um, with a radius of 10. It'll just fill one layer uh, with a radius of up to a radius of 10 uh, with green wool. So there's our floor. And this is basically your little cell. Um, <coughs> so something like this, which might take a long time to you know go through and, and, and place every block, it, it speeds it up with... Um, with world edit. So this is what I've done here. Um, you can see we have a nucleus, and a nucleolus inside the nucleus. And this was just made by making spheres of things. So for example, with world edit, you can make spheres and, 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 and shapes and ellipsoids and things. So I'll give you an example of one. Um, we can say sphere, actually we can say H sphere for hollow sphere. I know I'm, go I'm probably going a, a little fast with all these commands and stuff. Um, but uh, like I said, um, this is just sort of a demonstration, not really a um, tutorial. Um, so, um, if you, like I said before, if you have any questions, you can either try to find a video to answer them, or ask me, and I'll be happy to provide any insight that I have. Um, so, a hollow sphere made of glass, and with a radius of, say, 10. Boom, and it just makes it for you. And all this work that you could have spent trying to make your sphere it makes it for you. Now, one thing that I noticed with your video uh, and your cell is that you have, because you've made everything sort of by hand, it has a very organic feel to it. It's not a perfect sphere and it's not, you know, all that. So, you know, that might be one thing that you really want, um, that you want it to look organic. I'm just going to hit undo here to, to get rid of that. Um, but there's a, there are a couple ways of, of making that happen with uh, with world edit that might actually speed things up, uh, that might still speed things up. So um, what I'm going to do is create a sphere uh, of wool. It'll probably just end up being white wool, uh, and make it a w radius of one. So there's our there's our, our sort of our core, right? And then we can grab an item, any item. Um, it has to be an item though, not a block. Right, not a placeable block, but a, an item that you can use or hold. I guess I'll use this just golden apple. Um, yeah, we can use a golden apple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the features of World Edit is you can map functions onto uh, items so that you uh, you can turn them into paintbrushes in a sense. So I'm going to just do slash slash brush. Caps lock is on. Brush, um, and we're going to do sphere. So S. Uh, wool radius of maybe three. We can give it a three. You see what happens. So we can just boom, hit that with something like that, and then hit it from this side maybe, and like hit it over here, and then maybe down here, 
we get this sort of amorphous shape, right? And then now that we're done with this shape, we can be done with it, I guess. There, right? We can grab our wand and then just change my selection to extend, which is a different kind of selection uh, preference or uh, selection option mode, whatever, what have you. Um, you can just grab all this. And then we just say slash slash smooth, oops. And of course this little thing went a little wonky here, but that's okay. So now you can see it's sort of smoothed it out and changed the, the, uh, changed the geometry of it. I'll redo that for you. So let me just get rid of this red stuff. Oops. So hit undo first. See, that's how it was before. And then that sort of just changed it. So you can do things like this, and this almost looks like a human heart a little bit. Um, I don't know. So, you know, that's sort of what you can do. And another thing you can do, which I use with these two cells, you can copy-paste stuff within the game. So I'm not sure if that's a functionality that your uh, teacher or Minecraft EDU allows. Um, I know, like I said before, I know it allows a lot of world editing <coughs> things, um, such as that excuse me, expanded reach you have, um, an editable reach, so that's good. Um, we can say replace, one thing you can do which is actually really cool, you can set like distribution in terms of like the blocks, so you can say I want 50% uh, wool that is red, comma, 50% wool that is, I don't know, orange, uh, and then you can you can hit go. Oops. Um, right. Sorry. I have to say what I want to replace it with. So wool. There. I think. I think that works. Oops. I did. Yeah. That's what it is. Percent fifty. Replace wool with that. So you can like have this cool distribution of blocks and stuff and make really interesting patterns. So let me go to the cell now that we're sort of there. Um, what I've done is I've combined this with a, with a plugin called uh, Essentials for your for most bucket servers called Bucket Essentials, which just gives you a bunch of basic commands, including warp commands and and things like that. Um, so let me just give you a tour of the cell. Let me give you a tour. This is the cell. <laughs> We're now in the uh, what do you call this stuff? It's been a while since I've taken biology, so I'm actually a music student, um, but you know I love this stuff. So what is this? The the endoplasm, is that right? Is my getting that right? The Is that right? I don't know if that's right. The cytoplasm, maybe? Um, I forgot. I'm sure someone's going to put it in the comments. It's this, it's this. But yeah, this is the, the, you know, the fluid inside the cell, which is represented by air, of course. This is a chloroplast. Isn't that cool? And it's basically just an ellipsoid that I created really quickly with a... Um, with a with an, the, just the sphere tool, the same thing I used to make those spheres back there. Um, you can stretch it out, and you make this cool ellipsoid. And I filled it with um, some wool, which represents the chlorophyll. Um, this is a large central vacuole for most plant cells have. Um, it's full of water, um, and uh, I can show you how to make that if you want. This is a mitochondrion, and um, those are all the um, what do you call those things that are hooked onto the sort of the, the things? I don't know. There's just stuff inside there, I guess. This is a nucleus. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been such a long time. Oh my God, since I've since I've studied these things. But this is the nucleus, and that's the nucleolus, sort of a cross sectiony thing. And then over here is the plasmodesma to go to the other cell, which is basically just a, a flipped and copy pasted version of the of the first one. Um, daytime. Uh, daytime. There we go. Uh, and it looks like it's raining. Not in the desert, but somewhere. So maybe we can make it a bit brighter. Let's see if that... Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is basically like, yeah, like a flip version of it. Um, which may, It's really easy to copy-paste things in with, uh, with, uh, with, this, with, this, with this plugin. So I'm going to just show you what I've done. You can see in the distance, I have a giant mitochondrion and a giant nucleus there. And so... Um, the idea is that the kids would sort of use this as their home base, right? This is your home base. And you would sort of go around um, as more of a free... The way I could see... Struct well, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't have much training in education, but the way I could see a, a lesson like this being, being 
you know, sort of drawn out would be you have the kids in here um, and you give them like maybe like a bunch of, like maybe a piece of paper that has a list of all the organelles and then they go into the organelles and they learn about the organelles by going in them and l reading some of those information blocks that you have in the, in the, in the, um, in the other mod, um, in the EDU mod, um, and at the same time exploring all the stuff and maybe also seeing graphical representations of the functions of each of each organelle, and then by the end of the class, they they may have to like have to have those all filled out, so you can sort of you know, so it shows that they actually went in to each one and and read about them and looked at them. So here's the mitochondria, and we can do the mitochondrion first. Now, bear in mind, I did this all last night, um, and so it, it's not finished at all. Um, but it's sort of a just a, like I said, a proof of concept. This mitochondrion took about half an hour to make, um, which is actually not bad, considering how big it is. Um, the the uh, nucleus over there took a little longer, but only because I incorporated some redstone that I had to kind of was giving me a bit of problems and I had to figure it out. Um, this entire cell right here took about two hours, um, I think, maybe less. Was it this that took two hours or the whole thing? I think maybe the whole thing took two hours, like all this plus the nucleus and the mitochondria. Anyway, let's go inside. So this is, this is a warp sign. You can right-click on the sign. This is sort of the same thing as those teleport blocks you were talking about. And now here we are in the mitochondria, and I got this giant thing of obsidian here. Um, this is just a remnant from when I was building it. Don't mind that. But, um, you know, you get in here. This is where everyone sort of lives. Not lives, but this is where they spawn. And... Um, you get out here, and imagine you have, like, you know, a, almost like a maze going around, right? Um, which sort of shows all the folds and the, and the surface area of the mitochondria. And, and sort of maybe one cool thing might be that they have to get through the maze to find, like, little bits of information here and there. Obviously, it wouldn't be too hard <laughs> of the maze so that, um, you know, they can actually find the information by the end of the class. But, you know, it's just something fun for them to do um, and explore inside the mitochondria AP, ATP synthase and all that stuff, right? Um, so, you know, um, the way I built this was I took, I generated two giant spheres, or actually one giant sphere, cut it in half, copy-pasted this half over there, but I flipped it, and then I sort of, I stacked these cross-sections all the way over to the end, and it just made this elongated, oblong, um, mitochondrion-shaped thing. So then when they're done, they can come back and warp to the cell. And you can even have it so that that warp sign is, is over at the end of the maze. Um, when they come back, they, they spawn back right over here. Um, so that's what that is. And we can head over to the nucleus. Um, you can see some towers in the distance. I was just playing around with World Edit before. Um, so right-click on the sign, and you end up on this pad. And this is the nucleus. Um, and uh, so we have... Um, what do you call those things that are sort of in the side of the nucleus? They're not the pores, they're the other stuff, the little things that just are in the nucleus. I forgot what they're called, it's been a while. Ribosomes? Maybe not, I don't know. I could be just making that up. But this is a nucleolus, um, and obviously here you could do um, a really cool thing that I'll explain later. Um, but this is a nucleolus, you can flip a switch, and it starts to flash. Um, producing its stuff or whatever it does. I actually don't remember what the nucleolus does apart from the nucleus. Is that just where the is that just where the all the the genetic data is stored? I know the nucleus is where the genetic data is stored, but like I'm not sure what the nucleolus has to do with it. Anyway, um, obviously if I were making this map for real, like I'd do a lot of research. But anyway, um, one idea is that you could have, I don't know if you've seen these things before, I would encourage you to look for them on YouTube if you haven't seen them. It's a redstone contraption where you have um, just these, it's made with pistons and usually wool and sometimes glass. I'm just going to pick four random colors here to represent the four um, nucleotides. Right? So you might have just this giant like belt going. Oops. Uh, whatever. You know. That'd be perfect. So you might have like, in, I mean, just just random, like random. It has to be a square belt, um, kind of randomy colors. And you could probably do this on a larger scale than just four by four. But it has, excuse me, something like that. Um, and then you might have something. Actually, this won't work because it needs to be 
it needs to be two nucleotides so that they can match up. But anyway, um, so then you might have the other nucleotides, you know, somewhere here. Um, and then this actually would be a larger square. This would be, say, like, 5 by 5, maybe? So, like, something like this, and then the pink. <coughs> Is that 5 by 5, or did I just mess that up? Um, yeah, that's 5 by 5. So what basically happens is you set up pistons in such a way that this, this, these all sort of move in a, in a circle, well, a square, but a circle, around, right? And, and then these ones do the same thing in sort of the opposite direction, so they're, they're just meeting up. And so, since they're different sizes, it'll change each time the combination of blocks that's together. Um, and that can sort of be representing, you know, um, DNA being formed, uh, if, if, you, if you want it. That's just an idea. Um, so yeah, so go back. And let's see. Um, that's mostly that's mostly it um, in terms of the cell. I have another thing to show you over there, um, but this is mostly it in terms of the cell. Um, this is the vacuole. I haven't had a chance to make it. If I were to make it, um, it would be nice to do it in a in a texture pack that has very clear water. Um, in other words, if I go over here, I'm just going to teleport over here real quick. Um, if I go over here and go in the water, you can see it's kind of hard to see. You know, if I stick a piece of glowstone down, I mean, you can just barely see uh, around. Um, that's because of the texture pack that I'm using, and actually, more than that, it's because it's because I'm I'm using a texture pack which normally has this texture pack is called Isabella. Um, it's a very good texture pack. I love this pack, um, but. Um, it has a custom water animation that isn't actually being supported right now with the mods that I have installed. So normally you'd be able to go in the water and it'd be like really clear and you can see for like a while, like a long time or a long distance. But since the the that isn't working with this with these mods right now, um, it's just using sort of the default water. Um, so it might be cool if they implemented something or if they already have that. I don't know that allows the teacher to change the students' texture packs. Um, and more importantly, you know, you can do something really cool where, like, you can actually, like, make, you know, patterns in, in the nucleus wall so that it looks more like a nucleus or something like that using different texture packs. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, if I were to do a vacuole, it would just be sort of maybe like a giant water world or something um, where uh, everything else would be big. So, like, you take all this giant thing and scale it up a jillion times and then make it so that the kids are sort of inside the vacuole. Anyway, um, just a really quick tutorial on how to make this. Um, real quick. Like I said, nothing really um, too in-depth because of time and stuff, but let me just get rid of that selection. Oops. So what I've done... Let me just, let me just um, climb up here. So we have a sphere made of glass and we're gonna make it 3 by 10 or actually you can go 10 by 10 actually 10 by 3 by 10 um, hollow 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 sphere it's my bad here we go so this is our container right um, we can just jump to the top that's our container for our vacuole that's the um, what do you call this stuff oh I, I wish I remembered the, the, the name of the membrane anyway um, it's not the cell membrane, it has like a the vacuole membrane. Um, anyway, let's go back. Um, so we got to fill it with water now. Extremely easy with world edit. Right? Fill water, oops, water radius of like anything, 20. Fills that up um, with water. Um, in fact, undo. If it's a concave thing going down, in other words, if it's sort of a bowl-shaped section, you can go up to wherever, you know, that is, um, which would be, I think, you think it'd be here. Oops. Ah. There. Oops. Okay. And then you can just fill it, like, from there. So you'd say fill water 20 with a depth of 3, and it would just fill all this with water. 
But then anything that's more like non bowl shaped, like upside down bowl shaped, you'd have to do it sort of manually. Um, but there, and that's your vacuole. And look how easy that was. That took us like a second to make. Now, <coughs> obviously, this is nowhere near the scale of your cell. Um, so I'm just going to undo all that. Get rid of that. Ooh, we got some water. Um, you can just go in here and say slash slash drain. Oops, drain 10. There, get rid of that. Um, so yeah, what was I going to say? Oops, I undid my... No, oh, my heart or whatever. Um, daytime. So, like, if you want to make it even bigger, right? Let's say you want to make this thing, like, you can walk around in this vacuole. You can see inside this thing. So, oops, uh, yeah, what you do is simply change the numbers. So, okay, let's do um, 30 by, th by 10 by 30. Boom, and now we just got this enormous thing, which would have taken you ages to place all the blocks. And, <coughs> excuse me, and you've got this done in a matter of seconds. So imagine how much easier it would be to prepare for class and to, um, to create lessons just using Minecraft. Um, ideally, I, I feel like it would be cool if you just had like a ton of just these packs that came with their own texture packs, with their own um, worlds, with their own things that just explore a certain aspect of, of, of education. So for example, in this case it would be cells, but you could have um, a human body thing um, where it's like an adventure map inside a human body where you learn. Um, I'm not sure, you probably know what an adventure map is. They're pretty common in Minecraft. If you don't, look, look up to see what an adventure map is. It's basically a storyline based map that someone makes um, and then they give the map to other players to then play through it, and you kind of win by just finishing the timeline. So imagine, um, imagine doing something where you create a human, like in, in Minecraft, like a giant human. Like, okay, imagine, see, see that big tower over there? We're going to jump over to that tower. 